Welcome to Pulp and Deco. Uh, we are a hand paper making studio and this is our first uh, real foray into making a more complex demo for your enjoyment. Uh, so today uh, my name is Jen Woodward and I'm one of the co-founders of the studio and uh, my lovely partner Gary Hansen is uh, also here doing all of the magic the <laughs> video and sound magic and we're just going to give it a whirl and see how this demo goes uh, today we're going to be using um, this uh, frame and using some paper pulp in it to create kind of a textured combination of a pulp painting and a pulp throne piece of paper sculpture that you could either like frame and put on your wall or you could cut it up and make into um, covers for little books which is probably what we're going to do but we're just going to show you kind of how that's done and uh, we have some materials some of them prepared already and you can see we have some uh, squeeze bottles and some pulps on the table but we're going to um, mix up some pulp for you that we have already um, created at earlier. That includes uh, what you see in this tub here, this kind of mound of gray stuff. This was from some cotton fiber that we made. Uh, and then the, the kind of whitish speckly looking stuff is made from old egg press uh, cards that they gave us like their mistakes and off cuts. So we have already made this into a pulp and squeezed out much of the water, but we're going to reconstitute it right now. So I'm going to take this over. Before I take it over, before I take it over, we're <laughs> I'll just tell you what, what reconstituting is. So I'm just going to be adding water to that. And if I add water to it and then mix it up with my hand really well, it'll still be kind of clumpy. So we want to disperse it more in the water. So we just got this amazing new uh, tool that I'm so excited to try out and we'll see if it's a demo fail <laughs> because I haven't used it yet. Uh, it's a concrete mixer, mortar mixer um, from Harbor Freight Tools. So we're going to add this to some water and then reconstitute it to get the pulp to be really nice and smooth and not lumpy. So here's our pulp. I'm going to start out with the cotton fibers first and see how they break up in here.
just be how it is for the sake of time here. what I was doing but what, what was happening in front of me and uh, now you know I've made myself part of the pulp uh, project I did not plan that but it's funny right so I'll just keep going so I'm gonna carefully set this down this time in this bucket is the gray cotton that I just mixed up and I'm gonna pour it into uh, I'm gonna pour it into this um, mold. And all this is is silk screen and a wooden frame. But I could use uh, you know a sheet or some other fabric to make a frame like this. So it doesn't have to be a silk screen. It just needs to be able to drain. So here we go. Let's see what happens here. That's kind of a nice base to start with. And I can move the fibers around. They're going to naturally form up in the middle. But I can move them around while the water is still draining and even afterwards. So that's kind of a cool base. And then uh, to continue to work with this, uh, in more of a pulp painting sense, I can use the squeeze bottle and when I use the squeeze bottle, I can squeeze out this material. This is cotton linters that have been pigmented and so that's like offcuts from the textile industry that have been pulped and made into this beautiful blue um, we pigmented them to this color. So now I'll use another color. Oh, I didn't shake it up enough. <laughs> so the key to this is kind of the same thing as what I was doing with the mixer. It's clumping as it sits uh, in this container. So I want to shake it up really well. And now when I use it, it's got a lot more fluidity. Oh, one thing I didn't tell you about this is it also has formation aid in it. So formation aid is something that will make the, fl the flow of this pulp coming out much more smooth and less clumpy. So that's why I can do this pulp painting with it. Uh, how about some yellow? Yellow would be nice. All right, we'll do some maybe more dots instead of lines. And I also am feeling like I have a lot of um, holes in here where there's no pulp. And I want this to be a solid piece of paper. So I don't want these holes here. So what I'm gonna do, I need another like filler I could fill it in with the gray stuff, but I think I'd like to have more contrast. So I'm gonna uh, take us to the other area over here where I've got a prepared uh, bunch of denim that was made from jeans. And I'm gonna squeeze that out a little bit so the pulp is a little more dry. You'll see, this will make more sense as I'm doing it. But I'm gonna squeeze it so it is more like this consistency and then i'll bring it back over to the table All right, 
So this is a paint strainer bag that I have here that was just put in a five gallon uh, bucket. So now I've got this pulp that actually, I told you guys that I was gonna throw some of this, right? So now's the time. Now's the time for throwing. We'll see what happens. It's more fun when you set this up and you have some distance so you can really get a good uh, throw. But it's a little clumpy. Uh, I don't want it to be that textured since I'm probably going to be using this for book covers. So I'm just going to take this spoon and smooth it out a little bit, which kind of undoes the throwing part of this, but um, maybe I'll try a different pulp for throwing. The gray stuff that I have under the table may be a little bit better, a little less clumpy. This denim is pretty clumpy. So I'm gonna grab the gray stuff and pull some out and throw it on there. So the key to all of this is that it's all wet. So the bonding can happen between the fibers as it dries and that it'll all stick together as one solid piece of paper. So if you can do something like this at home, I would highly recommend that you uh, wear an apron <laughs> and that you give yourself a space where you don't mind things getting wet, pulp getting thrown around. This is a great activity to do outside. Um, we're in our studio, so it's okay if uh, we get messy in here. That's the whole point. Whoa, that's looking really red now. Uh, so I'm just going to give it a good pat to squeeze out some of the water. And you could even use, I've got a sponge here, a mortar mixing sponge. And I could squeeze out more of the water with that too. All right, I'm not going to flip this over because that almost just happened. And then, you know, one, one uh, unexpected event during a demo at a time. Uh, another thing that you can do is use a brush and if you really want to have more intention about where your pulp is going, you can use that brush to then move it around. And if you have more formation aid in here, it'll be more slimy and it will move around even more smoothly, a little bit more like paint. So that's that pulp painting part. Uh, but this is coming together in an interesting way. Uh, I do feel like we need a little bit more of the blue denim to fill in some spots. And maybe even some of this uh, white pulp that I showed you before that was the egg press cards. So what I'll do is just mix that by hand here with a little water. It's okay if it's a little more clumpy. I don't need it to be super smooth because I'm gonna throw it on like that. It's very satisfying to give yourself this freedom to not really like, you know, plan it out and be like, oh, this is exactly how this needs to look. You're, you're just having fun moving the pulp around. Uh, I'm sure some people would say this as a, like a Pollock-like, Jackson Pollock uh, drip painting effect. Uh, what I know is that if you've been making a lot of sheets of paper and you, like maybe for a custom order or something, they need to all be the same, this is an excellent way to unwind after doing that. All right, 
So we're getting a lot more coverage now. Looking good, looking thick, which for book covers, we want to have a little bit more of like a thick look. Gonna use that sponge again. You can, maybe you can hear the water uh, draining out as I do that. And you can probably see that the surface really starts to change when you take out some of the water. Okay, it's coming along. Uh, I'm gonna use a little bit of this smooth stuff and kind of fill in some areas. See how this is moving much more fluidly? I think you can see. Let me hold it up like this. There we go. Now you can see. Uh, that's because it has so much more formation aid in it. Uh, you can get formation aid to add to your pulp, even if you just make pulp in a blender um, from a supplier like Carriage House Pulp uh, or Twin Rocker. And we have links to those uh, suppliers on our website under the resources tab. There's different paper organizations and places you can check out, but there's suppliers and that can be really helpful uh, for finding materials um, to make your paper pieces. So I'm gonna smooth this around a little bit more. And one of the cool things about this process is you have kind of a very distinct uh, front and back. So the, the back of this is up drying up against the screen. That's what I would call the back, at least for now. And it's going to be really smooth because it's up against this silk screen as it dries. Then this side, what I'm calling the front that I'm working on, is uh, going to be much more textured because it's just drying against the air and it doesn't have anything to restrain it as it dries. So this is looking pretty funky. What do you guys think? Uh, funky good? Funky bad? I guess that's the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I think it's funky good. <laughs> well, well, good. I appreciate that from the producer side. <laughs> all right. So to pull this all together, I want to do just a little bit more pulp painting and bring back some of those cool lines that we were getting before. Uh, some, I don't see a lot of yellow on the side anymore, so I'm bringing them back to yellow. We've got a few different colors of yellow too, so maybe we'll play with different colors of yellow. Oh, this one is way thicker, so it's not going to come out so smooth. Full disclosure, these bottles of pulp have been in our refrigerator for months, so I have no idea, like, the consistency of any of them. Uh, you are seeing in real time my experience with them. Um, this is going to be, like, really translucent because it's abaca, which is a banana plant fiber that... Um, has been processed in our Hollander beater for a really long time. And you can't really see it very well showing up here, but as it dries, it's gonna be this really nice um, thin line across the piece. All right, I feel like we're close. Maybe a little bit more blue. We didn't use any of this, this cool blue before. So almost a purple. It's looking good with the yellow. 
Uh, yeah. And then I don't want to squeeze this too much with the sponge as a final step because you saw before as I was doing this, as I sponged, it would kind of move some of the pulp around. So I'm going to just hold the back as I sponge just to give it a little bit more stability. Oh, there's that what happened. It's stuck to the sponge. Just got to move it back. So you may decide, you're like, I'm fine with it as it is. I don't need to sponge. Or you can just be very gentle, give the back. If this was up against something as uh, you're throwing the pulp and everything onto it, uh, you could then have a little bit more stability where the pulp will stay. But all of this is a learning process. I've been a paper maker for many, many years and everything, every process, you kind of know what to expect, but everything is different. That no two times is ever totally alike. All right, so that looks pretty good. There's a couple of holes that I want to come back to and fill in on the side. But for our purposes, if you want to see that up a little more close. Uh, yeah, I think that's good for a demo. And like I said, we're just going to fill in these little holes that came through as I was sponging and call it good. Uh, I'll put this in front of a fan and let it dry. Uh, it probably will take up to a week. It's pretty thick. This is a pretty thick thing. Uh, looks a little bit like a funky carpet right now and it will retain some of that flavor as it dries. Um, but I love it and I hope that you've enjoyed this process and our first foray into showing you a demo. Totally off the cuff and uh, will be the first of several that we'll be doing this year and when you see us next time we'll be in a totally different space we are saying goodbye to the studio uh, after several years it's time to move on uh, the pandemic changed everything so you'll be seeing us in our home studio and we look forward to sharing that space and new techniques and processes with you there so thanks thanks for watching and for um, your interest and support. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.